Hello everyone, so today we have the part 2 of the crime scene investigation PCR lab and we start with the preparation of uh, 1x TAE buffer so the stock one is 50x and you need to prepare 2 liters of 1x TAE buffer so here uh, in your lab book you will need to calculate and document the volumes then you will be using this 1x TAE buffer uh, for the gel preparation so uh, you will be casting gels uh, uh, with the agarose dissolved in this TAE buffer and also it is going to be used as a running buffer for gel electrophoresis okay so the next what you do you uh, cast the gels first of all of course you weigh one gram of agar or agarose and it is going to give you one percent gel uh, so you you weigh it then you put it in the Erlenmeyer flask and uh, bring to volume of 100 milliliters of course you dissolve it in TAE buffer but the thing is the agarose is not easy to dissolve that's why you are going to heat it and heating is going to be performed in the microwave you could also use the uh, heaters but it takes much more time so for the microwave you're going to use the maximum power and uh, the time uh, is one, 30, uh, 1 minute 30 seconds so in this case every 30 seconds you're going to check your uh, gels and you don't want to boil it you just want to dissolve it okay so every 30 seconds stop the microwave and check the uh, solution uh, when it's totally transparent you can remove it from the microwave and let it cool down on the bench while it's cooling down you can assemble the forms in which you are going to cast the gel then after we obtain about 45 degrees of celsius uh, we can slowly pour the gel or the solution of the gel into the form and you want to avoid the formation of bubbles because if you take the gel so let's say we have three wells here and at some place you will have a bubble when your DNA is applied the current so minus and plus here it will move towards the plus pole and if it encounters the bubble it will uh, kind of try to go around it and of course in this case you will not receive the clear result so let's say that we have two parts one was going straight another one was going through this bubble and in the result you will obtain something like that instead of a good band like this okay so you leave it at room temperature to solidify in the video you will see two types of gels that we are going to use one type is usual and we are going to stain it with fast blast dye uh, the second one is actually fluorescent and fluorescence is given uh, by the cyber green fluorophore cyber green uh, so what happens here the cyber green uh, is positively charged and in this case it will move from plus to minus right and whenever it encounters the um, the DNA uh, it will form a distinct band which will be visible under the excitation with UV light so we will be using UV light okay okay so we have the next step of the video series and on this step we are going to uh, prepare the samples for loading on the gel 
So you are given the 5x loading die and also you are given the DNA ladder. So what is ladder? Um, usually it is the set of um, DNA fragments of the distinct sizes. So let's say that we have inside this DNA ladder we have fragments of 5 kilobase, uh, 2 and half kilobase, then 1.2 kilobase and 1 kilobase, okay? So this on your gel you will see as the ladder and because of uh, the presence of this DNA ladder on your gel you can easily compare your own bands so let's say you have two bands here and of course it will tell you that uh, the band number two is bigger than 1.2 kilobases but um, smaller than 2.5 kilobases as well as the um, band one is bigger than 2.5 but smaller than 5 kilobases. So this is about the DNA ladder and the loading die, again, it, it is using the glycerol to make sure that your DNA stays in the well and does not float away from the well. So now what you need to do, you need to calculate the amount of loading die that you need to add to your 40 microliter samples and after you calculate it you document it in your lab book so you add the loading die to your samples and then you are mm, spin down the samples why would you need to do that because you have let's say the PCR tube and your sample is on one wall and the loading die is on another wall okay so sample here and loading die on this part. So to mix them in the first place you will need to have them in the same place. That's why you are going to spin them down and obtain the mixture of sample and loading die. So in the fourth video you will see how to load the gels with the samples and first of all you are going to pour uh, 1xTAE running buffer into the gel tray so usually it takes about one liter and this running buffer should cover your uh, your gel and also fill the wells in your gel okay so what you do when you load it first of all you take the sample and everything is spun down next you are going to place the tip of your pipette inside this solution and pipe it up and down so that you mix it well again okay so after that you're going to take 20 to 25 microliters and place them in the um, in the well so let's say this is a well of your gel okay so here should be the level of your running buffer and you should place a tip of the pipette inside the well. If you are putting it above it, uh, the, the part of it will just float away. So don't do that. Try to really dip it in the well and then slowly release it. You push on the button on your, uh, on your pipette, uh, which creates the pressure so the and the samples will be released inside the well okay do not release this button before you remove the whole pipette uh, pipette tip from the well otherwise you will suck up the sample back and also you will create the vortex here which will lead to the uh, floating of your samples again also why you would need to do it slowly because if you make it with a huge pressure the sample will counter hit the bottom of the well and float away okay another word for the loading die so why do we use the loading die uh, in the video i said that we really need to bind the dna to glycerol 
and of course if we don't use the loading die the DNA will easily float away here okay so be careful and use all of these tips of course you can use your second hand as a block so that this tip will not be shaking and of course it, it creates more precise conditions for your experiment after you loaded all the wells you will need to close the lid and of course you have this tray here uh, with two electrodes one will be red the second will be uh, black black is usually for negative and red for positive you should connect them color to color so red to red and black to black on the video you will see the four uh, columns of the connections or connectors and you will need to use these columns okay because they are related to the same output if you plugged red to uh, to this connector you should plug the black to the same column connector of the black so this is the right way to connect if you want to use red here and black here it won't work and you will see the error message on your screen of course the wells of your gels should be closer to the black uh, black pole why because the dna is negatively charged and it will move towards the positive positive electrode if you connect black to red and red to black you will have positive here and negative um, below in this case from your well so let's say this is your gel and here is the loaded well of course the DNA will easily go through this part and you will lose the experiment so be careful with the connections black which is negative is on the top of the gel tray and you connect it to the negative connector okay so after you connected everything you should set up the power supply and we're using 120 uh, volts it is the constant voltage also you could increase it to 130 but not more usually uh, you could also decrease it to 100 but in this case of course it takes much more time than 120 voltage after that you're going to wait until your bands travel on your gel about two-thirds of its length if we uh, wait more we are in risk of losing some uh, smaller DNA uh, DNA fragments so usually two-thirds or even half of the length of the gel in the next video you will see how to dilute the fast blast and we are going to use 5x working solution so for this staining I am preparing 500 uh, milliliters and it is our final volume this is our final concentration and the stock concentration is 500x now you need to calculate how much of fast blast stock you need to dissolve in how much of water of course you document it in your uh, lab book so you collect the gels from the tray and rinse them in uh, distilled water and after that you can pour the fast blast working solution and you should cover your gels with the fast blast dye otherwise they will uh, easily dry out and you will not be able to uh, take a picture of these uh, gels you usually put it on the agitator or the shaker it is also called shaker and leave it overnight uh, after you put it on this shaker you should set the appropriate speed because if it's too much the fast blast will be spilled 
uh, from your uh, gel hold holders and they will dry out so be careful with the speed of the shaking okay so this is the possible results that you are going to obtain so on this part we have the fast blast dye and here we have cyber green green okay so uh, you can see the ladder here you can see the crime scene a b c and d suspects so as i said we have the uh, dna ladder which starts from mm, from above so the highest band will show you the uh, the heaviest one so knowing this uh, distribution of the bands you will need to identify the crime uh, participant uh, in the list of su suspects okay so here on this side you see the uh, fast blast and as well as in the DNA fingerprinting lab we don't see the distinct bands so if you here can distinguish between these bands so this is one two three four five six seven eight here um, you more or less see the second third okay so second and third bands the rest are not shown uh, very distinguishable and also you can see the very faint heaviest band in the ladder line okay so again we have the standard gel and from one side to another we have eight centimeters so these eight centimeters you're going to uh, calculate uh, if you are needed to calculate you're going to calculate the distance um, between the um, bands and identify uh, let's say that for CS you obtain the values that are very close to one of your val um, suspect's values so let's say suspect x and by this um, rough equation you are going to identify the person who really participated in this crime scene okay so this is the end i will upload these uh, lab results on the moodle so you will be able to use either printed version or the image editors with the special tool called ruler. Okay, thank you all for watching, goodbye.